Hey everyone and welcome back to Alf's Mustang Garage. Today we're going to do a disc brake conversion on the front of this 1967 Mustang Coupe. Here's all of our parts that we're going to be using. I did not buy a complete kit from one particular manufacturer. I actually pieced all this out uh, together. So everything I got was from National Parts Depot. But um, the master cylinder that we're going to be using is set up for a disc and a drum rear car. We got the power booster that we're adding, so we have a new brake pedal to go with it. The lead kit comes with new brake lines as well as a proportioning valve, so that should be a nice easy setup there. Um, from National Parts Depot, we've got our backing plates, we've got our caliper brackets, we've got our hoses, we've got some retainers, uh, we've got calipers and rotors these are the factory style replacements that way you can get your you know brake pad replacements from your local auto parts store wheel bearings all from local auto parts locations this is from AutoZone. we got these from o'reilly's we got mounting hardware all from national parts depot we'll show you step by step how we're going to do that if you're starting to see a lot more of my videos uh, you're enjoying the content you're liking the content um, Let's hit, have you hit that subscribe button, you click on the notification bell. Uh, we really do appreciate the support. Uh, we are trying to grow the channel. Um, and we can kind of keep bumping out these videos and uh, kind of keep you guys uh, uh, rolling with your Mustangs. We, we, we're here to keep your Mustang on the road and out of the garage. So that's kind of what our purpose is. But anyways, um, any support is appreciated. So um, let's get this uh, job started here. First things first. If you're doing a disc brake conversion, you want to make sure your wheel size is big enough, large enough to accommodate the brake caliper, okay? Because if you're running just traditional stock uh, steel wheels on this that came on the car back in the 60s, um, you'll find that you probably won't have clearance and you will have to upgrade your wheels. So luckily for this car, this has already been upgraded to a nice 17-inch uh, wheel. First thing you gotta do to get this uh, drum off is you gotta pull your dust cap or your grease cap. Our channel locks usually does a trick with that. And then we gotta get a cotter pin out and pull our uh, wheel bearing off. Do a little metal retainer. And your nut there that sets bearing preload for that nut. And usually you can kind of like work the drum off a little bit and you got your thrust washer and your outer wheel bearing and now your whole drum assembly will easily come right off yeah, and then your hub assembly sometimes these kind of stick on your drums so sometimes they come off in two pieces okay now we can start having some fun so uh, we're going to remove our shoes here and our springs, all of our hardware, and come right off. We got our little uh, brake shoe removal spring tool here. One comes off, piece of cake. Second one pops off, piece of cake. And it's our self adjuster. Okay, there's all your shoes off. 
So now we need to get uh, the backing plate off. Some studs, I'm kind of hidden in all this brick dust. Some studs in here with some nuts on the back side. You also got your uh, wheel cylinder, the brake hose that runs up underneath there. And so we'll undo the brake hose, wheel cylinder. There's also two little bolts on the back side that map that wheel cylinder in. And we'll pull the backing plate off. Okay, we're on the back side now. Uh, we're gonna use a line wrench, 7 16 to break this uh, line loose right here. You wanna be careful with these because you wanna watch to make sure that uh, nut is actually turning on the line. Sometimes they get stuck and they get uh, twisted and you can break that hard line. Got that retainer plate right there. That comes off fairly easily. Now we can get in here with our regular 7 16 Okay, soft line is removed. We're gonna do these mounting bolts right here for your wheel cylinder. Once the bolts are out, you can easily slide your wheel cylinder and hose assembly in one piece right out of the backing plate. Okay, so now we just have these four uh, nuts here with their studs. And then we can remove our backing plate assembly. Okay, so now you got all four of those nuts off. You can just kind of pull these studs out. And you got uh, that plate with a old, <laughs> look at that old paper gasket. That's awesome. Oh, look at this. Backing plate comes off. So from here, we just need to kind of clean this up really good and we can start the assembly process. So first things first is our uh, caliper mounting bracket, followed by our dust shield. We got a uh, caliper bracket mounting bolt kit. They come with these uh, specialty locking nuts that go on there on the back side. Okay, so the kit will come with one longer bolt than the others. This long bolt goes on the tie rod end side. So that way it makes it all the way through. Okay, so now we have our caliper bracket, our backing plate on there nice and tight. We are now ready for a brake rotor. So let's get some wheel bearings packed into it and a seal in it, and then we can get it installed. Okay, so usually when you get new rotors, they come with you know, new races installed. So we're just gonna pack our bearings and then install our seal. Bearing goes in first, then your seal goes in. These are pretty easy, you can just kind of tap them around like this. Okay, so the seal is installed, and now we can install our rotor back on to our spindle. Don't be afraid to get some nice new grease all around your spindle that you just cleaned up. Rubber goes on and then the outer bearing goes on. Okay, now that your rotor is on, you can 
use your original thrust washer and your spindle nut. Trying to set that preload on that bearing just a little bit more past uh, zero play there. And she should be good like that. Nice new cotter pin to go with it. Watch your eyes. And then our Dust cap. Okay, so it's time for our uh, brake caliper on here. So um, the side that uh, is on the left side, we're working on the driver's side. It's going to have your you know, mounting uh, brackets right here that are going to line up with the caliper bracket. That will slide on just like that. The transfer, the transfer tube will be up top. The bleeder screw will also be up top. So then you kind of know for sure that you're working on the correct side. Get a couple of new bolts that mount our caliper to our Caliper bracket. These ones come with Loctite. Okay, do be aware that uh, some of this aftermarket stuff you're going to have to kind of make fit. Um, these backing plates looks like we have a clearance issue, so we're going to have to trim some of this off right here. Okay, so what I did to make clearance is I just kind of used some uh, metal tin shears and just trimmed off a little bit right there and then ground it smooth. That way, there's no sharp edges. Spray a little bit of uh, black paint on there. And looks like uh, no one was even there, hopefully. So, okay, caliper is now going back on. Okay, so everything's turning nice here. There's nothing grinding, nothing rubbing. So these pads are actually really nice to uh, replace because they literally just like slide right in like this. This is like a really nice brake caliper. I love these brake calipers. That's how you install your pads, just like that. But before we install our pads, we're going to put a little bit of lubrication on the back of these. And this is the stuff I like to use from Permatex, the Ceramic Extreme Brake Parts Lubricant. And you don't get like crazy with this stuff, you just kind of put a little bit of dab on there. So now we just need our retainer clips. Okay, and that's our pad and our rotor setup. So from here, we just need to put on our brake hose. And then this side is complete. 
Okay, so let's not forget our hose and our uh, copper washer, washer that goes in here. Get that in there and snug her up nice. Okay, so something you gotta watch out for when you're putting on your new hoses. So we're working on a on a late 67 and it takes the uh, 7 16 inch uh, brake hose fitting to the caliper. However, on the main line end here, it's also a 7 16 and the, the brake hose is a 3 8 So they just don't quite mesh in. So the easiest way to get past this is to use an adapter uh, fitting. And that way it'll adapt from the 3 8 to the 7 16 And you won't be out looking for new hoses or trying to modify your main line. It just doesn't make sense to do that. So with a, with a little adapter fitting like that, um, you can make it work, so. Okay, now I can install our retainer clip back into place. And she should be good. So that is our, uh, left hand side for our brake conversion. So now we just need to essentially repeat these steps on the uh, right hand side. And then, uh, then we'll be on to uh, a brake master cylinder. Uh, we're gonna put a booster on this and our new pedal. And then we'll bleed the whole system out, uh, add a proportioning valve, which comes with the lead brakes kit. And so, so yeah, that's uh, the first step.